All right, Shalom. We the brothers of Great Millstone of Branch out in this morning. First and foremost, we give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechach, Wadash. Double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach the gospel of truth and necessarily always a charity. And um, you see the title of the lesson, you know? We're just going to get right into it. Can you, uh, we start with uh, Daniel 7 and 9? This is uh, Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. It says, I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit. So boom, right there. Matter of fact, let's start at 1. God, this is Daniel chapter 7 and verse 1. Because this is going to sum it all up, you know? In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Mm -hmm. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. So this first beast that he's seen represents a kingdom, the first rulership that he's seen, which when you go to Daniel, the second chapter, it, it, it coincides with the seventh chapter. This is Daniel 2 and verse 37. Thou, O king, are a king of kings, for the power of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And whatsoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thy hand and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So the first beast that Daniel seen uh, represents the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. You see, they call it the uh, Assyro Babylonian Empire in, in, in secular history. And the ruler of that was Nebuchadnezzar, who's a. Uh, uh, which is um, the king that had the dream in Daniel, the second chapter. Right? So let's go back to Daniel, uh, continue to Daniel 7. God, this is back in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 5. And I beheld another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said, and they said thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. Right, now which kingdom or, 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 or which... Uh, 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 um, Rulership came next after the uh, Syrian Babylonian Empire. Now go back to Daniel 2 and verse 39. And after thee shall arise an other kingdom inferior to thee, and another the third of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. So the second we talk about is what? This bear, which in Daniel's uh, uh, the second chapter, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, it would represent the breast of silver. So this bear and, and the breast of silver is synonymous with each other. And who took down or, or who ruled next after um, the Babylonians? This is um, Daniel. Salaki, so, bear with me. This is Daniel chapter. Because I know it's Tinkle Tinkle of Carson. Where is that written? Yep, this is Daniel 5 and verse 30. I get straight to the point. Matter of fact, 28, because 28 sums it up. This is Daniel 5 and 28. It says, Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. So the, uh, the Babylonian kingdom was taken out of the hands of uh, Nebuchadnezzar's grandson and given unto uh, 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 the Persians and the Medes which is the breast of silver, which is this uh, uh, bear, the second beast that Daniel seen, right? So let's go back to seven and continue. It says uh, Daniel seven. And this is all within secular history, you know? This past Saturday, um, the apostles were, were, were going into a little bit of history, man. And Apostle Sahar made a statement about, a, a you know, going and searching these things out because it boosts your faith. It, 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 it increased your confidence that you have in these words. Because you know that they came to pass, you know, but go ahead. back in Daniel seven and six, it says, after this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The, the beast had also four heads 
and dominion was given to it. Right. So what be or uh, what king and what rulership came after uh, uh, the Persians and the Medes? Because back in this Daniel two in verse thirty nine, it says, "After thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee." That was the second, and another, the third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. This third kingdom, uh, 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 which represents the brass, which is the same uh, uh, leopard or same beast or kingdom or rulership that Daniel seen in Daniel the second, uh, the seventh chapter. Right. So going into secular history, you know that the Assyrian Babylonians was the head. Uh, the next one that ruled was the uh, uh, the Persians and the Medes. The next one to rule after that. This is um, first Maccabees. One and one. And it reads. Salakia. This is first Maccabees one and one. And it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. You know, so that leopard represents Alexander the Crete, which is what? The uh, kingdom of the Grecians, the kingdom of the Greeks. And those four wings represent what? Those his four generals who who ended up taking power of his rulership. Right. Go ahead. Verse seven, after this, I saw in the night visions and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth and it had great iron teeth. Let's go back to Daniel two and verse 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, great iron teeth. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. So the kingdom that came uh, uh, that that rose up after the uh, um, the Greeks were the uh, the Romans, you know, which you can read that in Maccabees as well, because um, the fame of the Romans was spread during the time of the Greeks. Yeah, I believe it's the eighth chapter. This is um First Maccabees eight and one. Now, Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans, that they were mighty and valiant men and such as would, as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them and make a leap of amity with all that came unto them and that they were men of great valor. It was told him also of their wars and noble acts, which they had done amongst the Galatians and how they had conquered them and brought them under tribute. Uh, I'll just read verse three and what they had done in the country of Spain. For the winning of the mines of the silver and gold, which is there, and that their policy and patience, they had conquered all that place, though it were very far from them. And the kings also that came against them from the uttermost part of the earth, till they had discomfited them and given them a great overthrow, so that the rest did give them tribute every year. See? So that's who came uh, up afterwards, right? Let's go back to Daniel 7. Back in uh, Daniel 7 and 8, it says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Right. So now this little horn, let's go back into Daniel 2 and verse 41. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there but there shall be in it the strength of the iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So what this is going into is going into the current rulership that we're uh, uh, living in now, which the 10 toes represents what the European union, you know, uh, uh, some of them strong, which represents the iron, some of them weak, which represent the clay. According to Habakkuk, the second chapter, when it says a uh, heap heap upon himself, thick clay, that word clay in the Hebrew goes back to like bot yat, which means heavy debt. So there's countries which are in debt and there's countries which are, are financially strong. We represent the European Union today. You see, and who's ruling over that? <clears throat> this is Revelation. Uh, 17. And. This is Revelation 17 and one. Or should I go back? Um, 
This is Revelation 17 and 1. It says, And there came, and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Um is that the one I'm looking for? The one where uh she was riding the beast. It is one. Uh I'm gonna jump down to verse seven. It says, And the angel that said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Now, didn't that beast in Daniel 7 said it had ten horns upon it? You know, so it's the same beast uh that Daniel seen is the same beast that uh um that John is seeing. You see. The fourth kingdom is the kingdom of Rome. But there, there were two parts to it. There were an ancient pagan Roman Empire, right? Matter of fact, we just um continue to read down. This is verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit out of Europe, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and one is. So the one is is, is the one that was ruling during the time of John the Revelator. You see? And the one that was ruling during the time of John the Revelator was the kingdom of Rome. Right? And it says five were fallen. Rome took down five kingdoms uh, or, or five um, uh, uh, dominions or, or, or five uh, 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 rulerships within the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire consisted of many different uh, uh, rulerships. Just like today, you have uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the European Union. There is different countries that makes up the power structure of today. Well, it's the same thing that was taking place in ancient Rome. So the head that was, which is the sixth head, that was Rome. And the one it took down was Greece, was Germania ma uh, Major, Germania Minor. It was uh, um, uh, Spain. And, and what am I forgetting? And France. The French, which is the Gauls. They were known as the Gauls during that time. So those were the five, you know, if I'm not mistaken, it was the, uh, the French, the Spanish, Germania Minor, Germania Minor, and yeah, yeah, and, and, and the Greeks. Those were the five that were fallen. The one that is is Rome, right? And it says, and the other is not yet come. The one that was not yet come was talking about, um, was Spain one of them? So lucky because I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go this off memory, but I believe it is the French, Germania Manor, Germania Minor, uh, 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 um, Greece, Bible Kusha. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep reading. This is uh, uh, Revelation 17 and 10. It says, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. So the one that was coming was talking about uh, uh, Britain which Britain was that seventh head. It says, and the beast that was and is not, even he is of the eighth, right? Even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. So the eighth came out of the seventh head, which the seventh head is Britain, which that's where America gets its conception. It's from Britain, you see? Germania Major, Germania uh, Minor, the Romans, the French, the Spanish, uh, and British, Britons, the Greeks. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the five that were taken down, which we, which I should have knew that because that's what we read in Maccabees, how the Romans took down Spain. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Come on, come so uh, uh, Spain was one, the French was one, Germania Major, Germania Minor, and the Greeks. Those were the five that Rome took down. The one that was during the time of John the Baptist was the Roman Empire that was ruling. And then the one, the seventh head to come was Great Britain, 
and the uh, 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 the head that came out of Great Britain that came out of the seventh is America, which is synonymous with the horde that's riding the beast, which is synonymous with this little horn that came up in Daniel the seventh chapter. You see, this is all prophecy of America written within these scriptures, right? And what lets you know that they're eating much just real quick Revelation chapter 12 and verse uh, 3. And it says, uh, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. So it calls it a red dragon. Why? Because in Genesis, the 25th chapter, he saw what? He came out red all over, right? So it lets you know that they were Edomites, just to pull out that point. I'll finish the verse, though. It says, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. So that's right. So they were Edomites, man. All right. So the Roman Empire, so on and so forth, the, uh, the NATO, they're all led by uh, uh, Edomites, man. And then in the book of Second Esther, the sixth chapter, it says that what? Uh, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So Esau and Edom would have the last rulership right, before the coming of the Messiah, all right, bringing forth the kingdom, translating the kingdom from Esau, Edom unto Jacob. All right. Yeah. And just like what? They ruled on the planet Earth, right? Esau's rulership is here on earth. It's going to be the same with the kingdom of heaven with Jacob, man, the Israelites, you know? Because mm -hmm. the dragon uh, coincides with the serpent. That's it. And and, yes. and, and it says what? It speaks about um, um, uh, in Psalms 58, oh, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. It says that venom is as the ass of the serpent, right? Mm -hmm. This is the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 29. And this is uh, 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 the book of Job, right? I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. Who is our brother? Genesis, the 25th chapter. He came out red all over, right? You see? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, back in that uh, Daniel's, uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse, I'm going to read verse 8 again. This right. So to, so, so to sum everything up, Daniel 7 speaks about the little horn that came up. Daniel, the second chapter, uh, going into the, uh, the iron mixed with clay. We, we hit the Revelation 17 to show you that that beast that Daniel seen and the beast that John seen are one and the same. The whore that's riding upon the beast is talking about America, which is which is that eighth head that came out of Britain, which is that little horn that that that, that, that the brother is about to read about in Daniel, the seventh chapter, how it all coincides together and how they're being ruled by Esau, Edom, the so-called white man today. Go ahead. Daniel chapter 7 and verse uh, 8, it says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, mm -hmm. before whom there were the, there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Now, how did America get its conception? You know, it won its so-called independence from uh, uh, from Great Britain. The French War, the Spanish-American War. And, uh, no, that's the three. Britain. Yep. yep. Britain, France, and uh, Spain is, is those three horns. That was a uh, uh, plucked up, right? Mm -hmm. It says, um, and behold, in in this in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men, and they mouth speaking great things. Mm -hmm. Verse nine: I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit. Right. So it says what that those thrones, that those kingdoms, that those rulerships were cast down. This is Daniel the second chapter, back in forty two. It's Daniel 2 and 42. And as and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. I'm hoping all this is making sense through the spirit. It says, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Why? Because the kingdom that's divided cannot stand, as, as Yahweh Shah, uh, said, right? If Satan be divided against Satan, his kingdom shall not stand. Verse 44, and in the days of these kings, in the days of uh, the rulership, which is today, EU and the NATO, shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain with our hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great power hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. You see? So that stone, 
that was in Nebuchadnezzar's dream that Daniel was interpreting, that stone came out and did what? It broke all those kingdoms that came before it, man. That whole statue, that rulership, it was all broken down, which in Daniel the seventh chapter, it says what? I beheld to the thrones were cast down. What thrones? The rulership of all those heathens that came. That statue, you see, was cast down. Now that stone that came and cast it down was a, uh, 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 I'll just get the one in Peter. This is the book of uh, 1 Peter 2 and 6. It says, wherefore it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. You see? The same is made the head of the corner, which Yahweh Shah quoted that same thing. Yahweh Shah is that chief cornerstone. You see? It's another one in Ephesians. I could just grab one more. The Spirit just gave me this one. This is uh, the book of Ephesians 2. And, um, Verse 20, I started 19. It says, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of the Most High and are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. So that stone that came as our Lord and Savior cracking those clouds, riding upon that chariot, coming to do what? This is Revelation, the 19th chapter. Go ahead, Doc. You got it. This is uh, Revelation chapter 19 and verse uh, 11. It says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Mm -hmm. In righteousness doeth he judge and make war. You see? Because how, because how, because how is he, how is he getting this kingdom? Right. It said that Daniel, the second chapter, the prophecy said, when that stone comes, it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. Go ahead. It says, verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. Yep. And upon his head were many crowns. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. That's it. That's it. That's it. Go ahead. It says, and, and not be, uh, excuse me, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And we know the name for somebody to get simple. So we don't know the No, no, we know the name. The name wasn't well known, as it says in, a, in the book of Exodus. You know, his name is going to be magnified just like how our Heavenly Father Yahweh's name was magnified during that Exodus. Yahweh Shah's name will be magnified during our second Exodus, man. When you go into that Greek word himself, it also means themselves, us being a part of his body. We have his name because we need that name in order to receive salvation. Go ahead. It says, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's it. So we go back to Daniel 7. And that's cool that you that you that you read that part about the, uh, 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 the white horses and the armies following him. Let's go back to Daniel 7. Back in Daniel chapter 7 and verse uh, 9 again, it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, mm -hmm. whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So the Ancient of Days is talking about our Heavenly Father, Yahweh himself. Go ahead. It says, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Mm -hmm. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Which describing the chariot. Go ahead. Verse 10, a fiery stream issued. And came forth from before him, thousands, thousands, thousand, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Right, which is the angels standing before the Lord, because it says what in the book of Psalms that the angels of the Lord are thousand, even thousands of angels. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture, but go ahead, let's keep reading. It says, "I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake." I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Which is talking about what? The nuclear destruction that's going to take place uh, here on this earth, man. This is how this ruler, this, uh, this this current present rulership is going to be taken down. It's going to be destroyed by ICBM nuclear fire. Go ahead. As concerning the rest of the beasts, 
they had their dominion taken away, mm -hmm. yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. A thousand years of hardcore slavery that these heathens got to uh, 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 go through. Go ahead. Verse 13, I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days. Hold on, but I thought, I thought Yahweh Shah and, and the Most High was one and the same. You know, just letting you know that they're two different entities, man. The son of man being a, a title for Yahweh Shah and the ancient of the days being a title for our, uh, uh, our father, Yahweh. You see, go ahead. It says, I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven. The clouds of heaven represents what? The chariots who make his, uh, his chariots like clouds or clouds like chariots. Psalms 104, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. Go ahead. It says, and came to the and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Mm -hmm. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations. Where, where is this taking place at, man? Where is the people located, man? Sorry. You know? And what kingdom is he taking? The same kingdom that the that the that the that, that, that the, the ten the ten horns and the seven heads ruled, the same kingdom that the leopard ruled. The same kingdom that uh, 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 the, 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 the bear ruled. The same kingdom that that lion ruled. It's talking about here on earth. You see? Quick one. Go ahead. This is Matthew chapter uh, 6 and verse 10. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. That's it. So he is going to be here on earth. You know, that's just plain, man. Yeah. Hey, because uh, uh, um, it said what? Can you read verse 14 again? Come it says, uh, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom on earth, mm -hmm. all right, as it is in heaven, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So Yahweh Shai, the son of man, is receiving this kingdom. This is this is the vision that Daniel was seeing. He's receiving this kingdom. Can we get um, um, uh, um, Revelation 2 and 25? I'll grab this in Psalms. This, yeah, Bible shot. This is Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Now, and didn't that say that in Daniel the second chapter? That's what the stone came to do to break in pieces all these nations, right? This is the uh, and it says even as he received of his father. This is uh Psalms two, and verse eight. It says, matter of fact, I'm gonna start at six. This is Psalms two and six. It says, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Who is this speaking of? Our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. In Hebrews the first chapter. It said, what, who, who, which of the angels did the Lord say that you are my son? It's talking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Let's keep reading. Verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth Man. for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. You see, you get Romans 8 and uh, uh, 16, Bible Kusha, because in that Revelation, the second chapter, the Lord said what? Even as I received of my father, Psalms, the second chapter is the uh, uh, the prophecy of Yahweh Shah receiving that. And then Yahweh Shah in turn said, look, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit uh, uh, with me in my throne, even as I have overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. This is Revelation 3 and 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. You hit that for me? 
This is Romans chapter 8 and verse uh, 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Mashiach. And joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. That's what I wanted, man. Because Yahweh Shai said what? This is St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, the fifth verse. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. And it said, what? I will give you the, uh, the uttermost parts of the earth for thine inheritance, man. So the 144,000, like it says in Revelation, the seventh chapter, they shall be joint heirs with Yahweh Shah who received all the earth, man. Can we go back to Daniel 7? Yeah, back in uh, Daniel chapter 7 and verse... 14 and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which that which shall not be destroyed i daniel was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me i came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this so he told me and made me know the made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. Mm -hmm. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Hold on, but did it say that those kings will arise out of the what? Out of the earth. Out of the earth, <laughs> and that the saints would do what? Take the kingdom. Go ahead. The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. And possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. That's it, man. You see, the saints shall take the kingdom. Who are the saints? Let's let, 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 let's just, you know prove that real quick. This is Psalm. You gotta go ahead. Go ahead. This is Psalms fifteen five. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Who is that? The Israelites, man. That's it. Explain. This is Psalms 148 and 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. You know? And a brother made a, a, a five point. This is uh, the brother uh, uh, GMS Soul Melody. Jacob's blessing, Genesis 27 and 28. Therefore, the Most High give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of earth and plenty of corn and wine. Verse 29, let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee. You know, it says let nations bow down. Where are the nation gonna be at? Here on this earth. Here on this earth, man. And what's the dew of heaven? Can we get Isaiah the 60th chapter? Yeah, you, you know, yeah, yeah. hey, call on my Yahweh by some you outside. You know, hey, hey, that's a beautiful precept too. The brother, the brother royal seed, Luke 29, uh, 22 and 29. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me. Verse 30, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. It says eat and drink now. Yeah, you don't do you don't eat and drink in the heavens. Drink in the heavens, boy. <laughs> Man, <laughs> this is Isaiah chapter uh 60 in verse um, you can start at one. One it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord Yahweh is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord Yahweh shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Mm -hmm. Which is what? This knowledge, man. You know, the light of Yahweh Basham Yahushai is risen upon us. Go ahead. It says, verse 3, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Mm -hmm. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be covered unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. 
So it says what that the, the the that the forces of the Gentiles shall be converted unto thee, man. So that's saying what that all the the, 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 the resources and and, and 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 the things that these that these heathens have, they're going to bring it unto the name of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. They're going to bring it unto us. Go ahead. It's it, it's a scripture that says that they shall bring it to the name. Go ahead, bro. Verse six: the multitude. Of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord Yahweh. Because that might be still in there. That might I might be jumping a gun in Isaiah 60. It might be still in there. It says, All the flocks of Kadar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Mm -hmm. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for thee and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord, Yahweh, yep. thy power yep. and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Mm -hmm. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So is this all happening in the heavens? This is here on the earth, man, that these heathens are going to serve us. It says that the, the, the sons of strangers shall build thy walls. Their king shall minister unto thee. Where uh, This is uh, the book of Psalms 149. And verse, I'll start at verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. We read who the saints are. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, man, which coincides with what? Revelation, the 13th chapter, which says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the faith and the patience of the saints, man, as it is written. All this is going to take place here on planet Earth. Go ahead. It says, I got a quick one. Mm -hmm. This is Isaiah 49 and 23. Hey, that's that's that. Hey, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. You you, you got to start up on that. Come on, come on. Let's start up at uh Isaiah forty nine. Start up at verse. Cause that's a meaty chapter right there. Start at um. Start yeah. Start at eighteen. Come on, Isaiah forty nine and eighteen. It says, lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. Who is they? Isaiah 60. <laughs> exactly. These heathens, right? Go ahead. As I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as with an ornament and bind them on thee as a bride doeth. Me and what? You know, we're going to possess these heathens, and, and, and when we possess them, we're going to have uh, 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 all their resources, man. As a matter of fact, this is the book. This is the book of Obadiah. Verse, I'm going to start at verse 15. It says, for the day of the Lord is near. Can you get Amos 9? It says, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. You see? Just like how they had us in slavery here on earth. We're going to have them in slavery here on earth. Verse 16. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Did they possess the heavens? So, so, so what's going to happen? We're going to possess their possessions, man. It says, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, 
in the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. Verse 19, and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. I keep reading down. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath. And the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Seraphat, shall possess the cities of the south. Man, sound like it's going to be on earth to me, because this is a future prophecy. Yeah, uh, where where it says, um, can you, can you just hit uh, Amos nine and what's that thirteen? Rebuild the tabernacles of David. Okay, come. This is uh, Amos chapter nine and verse eleven. It says, "In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, mm -hmm. and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, mm -hmm. that they may possess the remnant of Edom." Go ahead. And of all the heathen. And of all the heathen, which is saying what? We're going to possess their lands. It's like we just read in the book of Obadiah. And if you own their lands, you own their ass, man. You know? Because, because the scripture says what? This is second address. See, the spirit cold, man. When the spirit get hot, when the spirit get hot, man. This is second address, chapter six. In verse 59, if the world now be made for our sakes, the world was made for us. Come on, man. <laughs> Boy, so we just go. <laughs> <laughs> the world was made for us, and then we just all gonna be in the spirit world. Man, <laughs> it says, if the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? That lets you know that that inheritance that we're going to receive, the inheritance that it was speaking of in the previous scriptures that we read, is here on earth. Because all our forefathers was asking, Lord, how long is this going to be? Right, right, right. This is Acts, the first chapter, and the sixth verse. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, the disciples, the apostles, asked Yahweh Shai, saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Right, right, right. <laughs> he didn't say, our Lord, is we going to go into heaven and rule? No. He said, hey, these Romans ruling, now that you risen, are we going to whoop their ass and take right, this kingdom? Right, right. Like Daniel, the seventh chapter said, the saints shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever and ever. You know? Whoo. We go back. We go back. <laughs> This is uh, back in Daniel. Uh, uh, finish the Amos. Okay, count a lot. This is Amos chapter 9 and verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, said the Lord Yahweh that doeth this. Behold, the days come, and just to point that, that heathen, well, I'm going to grab a quick precept, all right? Because this is uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 63 um, and verse... Uh, 19 all right it says we are thine thou never there's rule over them they were not called by thy name so the heathen the actual heathen were never uh called by the name of the lord all right just so people don't get that all bugged out but this is uh amos chapter 9 and verse uh, 13 behold the days come saith the lord yahweh that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that sow a seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, Ooh. and all the hills shall melt. The plowmen shall overtake the reaper. That sounds like the trading places. That's it. That's it. That sounds like as they have done, it shall be done unto them. That's it. Go ahead. <laughs> it says, and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. Meaning what? He's going to bring us out of the captivity, you know? In the, uh, Joel 3, that Hebrew word bring again is shawab. I'm not sure if it's a matter of fact. Let me check it. What's that? That's Amos 9 and, uh, 14. This is Amos 9 and 14. Let's check that Hebrew word out. For bring again. It's the Hebrew word shawah, which means to return or turn back. So the Lord is bringing us out of that captivity. The same Hebrew word. Go ahead. It says, uh, and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall. Uh, 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 is that in heaven? 
They shall build the way cities. In Isaiah 60, it says the strength these heathens are going to do it. Right, right. So then it's way cities in, in the heavens. <laughs> now we got to rebuild. Like, oh, snap, we got to build this. <laughs> nah. <laughs> It says, and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, mm -hmm. and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall plant vineyards. Man. It says, they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land. <laughs> Come on, man. So we're going back to the land. Oh, that's all. And then, man, what? We oh, got to go man. on the prophecies about us going back into our land. That's the kingdom of heaven. Man. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, said the Lord, Yahweh, thy power. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Look at that one real quick. While you're looking for that, I got one. This is uh, Isaiah 61, and <sighs> I'm gonna start at one. I'm gonna start at one. I'm, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read it speedily. It's Isaiah 61 and one. The Spirit of the Lord power is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. The meek shall inherit the earth, right? He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to bind up the tabernacles of David. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh Basham Yahushai, in the day of vengeance of our power, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, for oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of Yahweh by Sham Yahushad that he might be glorified. Didn't it, didn't it say I will plant them in the land? Yes, We're the planting of the Lord. Let's keep reading. It says, verse 4, and they shall build the old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations, they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And who's going to do that? Isaiah 60. The strangers are going to build up our walls, man. These kings are going to serve us. Let's keep reading. Verse 5. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Then the Amos says what? That the plowmen shall overtake the reaper. We're no longer walking as servants upon the earth. We're going to be on the rulership sitting on a horse as we're supposed to be, as it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, man. See, these things is, 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 is the Lord said, I come to overturn, overturn, overturn it, man. It's time to set this right side up, baby. You understand? Let's keep reading. This is verse, um, verse six, Isaiah 61 and six. It says, but ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. And that's why they're bringing in their forces. Because the priests would get what? A tenth, a tithe of, uh, of the possession of the children of Israel. Us being the, uh, the, the priests of the earth, we're going to get a tenth, a tithe of the increase of the whole earth. That's why our gates are going to be open continually. Let's keep reading though. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their off. Whoa, oh, somebody said it ain't gonna be no sex in the kingdom either. Ain't gonna be no children either. Shit. <laughs> it says, and their seed shall be known amongst the Gentiles, and their offspring 
among the people, all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai hath blessed. I'm gonna just finish it out. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my power, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Damn. And it says what? Like as the earth bringeth forth the bud. <laughs> With that, bro, you know what I'm saying, bro? We can close out the lesson, bro. Call on him like a whole bash on y'all side, man. You got it. Man, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I'm going to start at verse 1, and I'm going to try to read down speedily as well. All right, the points are like 10, but it all, it all ties together. Deuteronomy 28 and 1, because this is the blessing. This was a lot of it to... The children of Israel, all right? This is what's allotted to the children of Israel. This is what the kingdom of heaven is. Us receiving of these blessings, man. All right? On earth. That's just going to explain clearly. Deuteronomy 28 in, uh, in the first uh, verse, all right? Because when you read in Hebrews, the eighth chapter, it goes into what? The new covenant. All right? The new covenant is us having the law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts. Because in the old covenant, we couldn't keep these things in our flesh. So now the Lord turned around like, okay, I'm going a, I'm to a ingrain these things in your mind and your spirit so that what? You can be perfect and keep them, man. Okay? So then with us being able to be perfect and keep them perfectly, we're going to go right back into these blessings that we were supposed to receive, man. Mm -hmm. And it uh, says... Isaiah 61, that everlasting covenant that we read about, you know? Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, you have with thy power... To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord, Yahweh, thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. The fruit of thy body, right? What's that, man? That's your seed, man. Mm -hmm. That's your children. All right. What happens through what? You get children through sex. Bug outs. It says, uh, and uh, and blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Oh, so like it. Yeah, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thine kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord Yahweh shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord Yahweh shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouses and, uh, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord Yahweh thy power giveth thee. And that's the, hey, that's the, uh, the, uh, the land of Israel, man. It says... Verse 9, the Lord Yahweh shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord Yahweh thy power and walk in his ways. And all the people, excuse me, and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord Yahweh, and they shall be afraid of thee. So everybody here on earth is going to see the estate that the nation of Israel is in. This is going to be happening in the kingdom of heaven, man. They're going to witness it, all right? They're going to witness what? The highest state that we're in, man. It's going to all play out on earth. How's this going to play out, man? All right? How's this going to play out then? Mm -hmm. Y'all got the answers, man. And like the brother said, it said, uh, uh, we shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, but the angels neither eat nor drink. Right, right, right. And that's what I was looking for. <laughs> you know? So, 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 which one? How you, you know? Yeah, it's not adding up, all right? We can jump back to Isaiah 49. Come on. It's, uh, this is back in Isaiah chapter 49 and verse... Uh, we'll read 19 again. 19. For thy waste for thy waste and thy desolate places in the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants. Hold on. But ain't it a remnant that's being saved? 
This is small. It's, 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 Isaiah the 10 chapter says a remnant shall return. But yet in the kingdom, it's going to be too small. How, 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 do you, how does that add up? Let's keep reading. It says, and they that swallowed thee up shall be far away. Who swallowed us up? The heathens, man. They shall be far away because as it is written in Deuteronomy, I believe it's the 32nd chapter. It says Israel shall dwell alone safely. Go ahead. It says the children which thou which thou shalt have. Huh? The children which thou shalt have. <laughs> man, there's no way around this, man. The children which thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the others, shall say again in thine ears, the place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then thou then shalt thou say in thine heart, who hath begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro, and who hath brought up these. Right. So in the kingdom, when, when, when it, 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 Jake gonna be popping out babies gonna be like, man, nigga, I was just in America, man. How, who is these? Who is these? Luke? God damn. That's how. That's how. What? Uh, uh what? What's the prophecy say? A, a little one shall become a thousand. You know, man. Man, you got it. It says, and who had brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These. Where had they been? <laughs> Thus said the Lord, Yahweh, power. <laughs> Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth mm. <laughs> and lick up the oh, dust. Oh, hold on, hold on. With their face toward what? The earth. So uh, I thought we was in heaven, bro. Don't make no sense, man. They shall bow down with a face on the damn ground, man. Go ahead. And lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Mm, 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 mm. We can go back to Isaiah 60. And verse 10. This is Isaiah chapter 16, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought and that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Ooh. Read that part again. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. What is that talking about? This is Isaiah 66 and 1. Thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. The earth, uh, Slaki, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. The earth is my footstool. Read that again. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Woo. Meaning the earth gonna be an Idon once again, man. You see? Man, you know. That's what it means, new heavens and a new earth, refreshed. You know what I'm talking about? Ooh. Go ahead. Verse 14, the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Mm. We can we keep reading down. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Mm. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord Yahweh, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, 
the mighty one of Jacob. Man, you know, so, you know the breast of the girls, man, this breast of the kings. It's talking about what? Them bringing us our resources, man. Man, can't wait. <laughs> Go ahead. For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. Where you find wood at? Where you find these things? Go ahead. I will also make the officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. Mm -hmm. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. In what? In thy land. What does Isaiah the second chapter says? Micah the fourth chapter. The wolf shall lay down with the lamb. This is what's going to happen when the when the nation of Israel is placed back into their land. They shall learn war anymore. They shall beat their swords in the plowshares. This is the prophecies. Right. right. All this all this going to happen on earth, and then earth is just going to be desolate. Everybody in the heavens. <laughs> He's going to refresh the earth for everybody to be in the heavens. It's madness. Like the brother put Ecclesiastes 1 and 4, one generation passes away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. But nobody will be here. Nothing. It's just going to be beautiful and just nothing. Just raw as hell. Just raw as hell. And we looking down at it in the heavens. Oh, that's look at raw. Like that, man. Wish I was there. Look at, look at that. <laughs> Smells. <laughs> right. You know, animals. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I can't eat or drink nothing up here. Look at all that tasty stuff. What? <laughs> Bugged out. It says uh, back in Isaiah chapter uh, 60 and verse uh, uh, 18. Yep. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. Mm -hmm. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord Yahweh shall be unto thee an everlasting light and thy power, thy glory. Meaning what? This knowledge is never going to depart from us. As a guy gets simple, or there ain't going to be no sun and moon in, in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it is, man. Those ordinances are a perpetual decree. It's talking about us continually having this knowledge, having this light. This is uh, Genesis. This is Genesis. Salaki, bear with me, bear with me. Genesis 8 and 22. It says, while the earth remaineth and the earth abideth forever, as the brother posted the scripture, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So those ordinances are forever, man. Go ahead. It says... Verse 20. Verse 20. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord Yahweh shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall wipe all tears away from our eyes, man. Revelation, uh, uh, what's that, 22? You know? Might be 21. 21. Yep. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. They, they shall do what? Inherit the land forever. Somebody gonna be there on earth. Yeah, the Israelites. <laughs> right. Forever. <laughs> the meek shall inherit the earth, the ones that's being delivered, the ones that's gonna be saved. Go ahead. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, will hasten it in his time. And it goes right into the Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Ain't no way around that, bro. If a nigga can't get it, we, we move it on. <laughs> so with that, man, we give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel of truth and in sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. The Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh for the understanding that he has given us, man. You know? Man. Shalom to you, brothers. Layelatuwa. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.